Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Now that the 2020 boa breeding season has come to an exciting conclusion, I've been thinking an awful lot about my boa pairings for 2021. Today I want to look back on my breedings in 2020, what worked and what didn't work, as well as give you guys a preview of some of the possible pairings of locality boas I have in mind for 2021. So if you want to learn all about keeping and breeding boas, as well as staying on top of my pairings in the future, please be sure to subscribe to the Brian Boas YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any of my upcoming boa videos. My 2020 breeding year, I'd have to say, was pretty good overall. I won't say it's my best year ever, but I produced some really nice litters that I'm really happy with and got some beautiful babies on the ground just getting established. One of the things that was really exciting about this year is it was my first year that I had second generation breedings, including both my Peru and my Suriname True Red Tails had one or both parents but were holdbacks that were produced here. So this is the father of my Suriname litter. This guy was born here back in 2014. I've been showing him an awful lot in my videos lately, but he's definitely one of my favorite snakes and possibly my most beautiful boa that I produced. Just a gorgeous animal. And he produced a really nice litter of babies. And in fact, he may be in my 2021 lineup with a different female. Uh, so I hope to have some more Surinams next year. I'll say more about that in a few minutes. I had a total of eight pairings in 2020, which was a record for me. The previous record was six pairings in 2019. And so these eight pairings included three BCC true red tails, including the Suriname, Peru, and the Tomatama Venezuela. And then I also had Tar Humara, Crawl Key, Pearl Island Boa, the long-tailed Boa longicata, and also Hog Island. I had to check my cheat sheet here. So of the eight pairings, it resulted in four gravid females. So this is a 50% success rate as far as gravid females. This is actually quite a bit less than I've had in the past. For example, in 2019, six out of six of my pairings resulted in gravid females and litters. So, and it, Typically, I get, you know, closer to 80 to 90 percent. So I'm not exactly sure why this is the case. It could be my luck was just kind of running out this year. People in general report that it's not uncommon for pairings not to lead to a gravid female. Also, it may be because my males, some of them have been bred for four years in a row. And so if I look at my four pairings that didn't result in a gravid female, well, three of them were first time females. So these are, you know, the first time you breed a female, you're not exactly sure what's gonna happen. It could be a little t t uh, on the young side still, although these animals were all at least five years old, um, or it might just need a little bit more time. And so the three that were first time females, but then I had one pairing, which was my Tar Humara pairing. And this was a proven pair and these, this female and male had bred successfully uh, two years previously. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure what happened. I think it might be because the male was paired up for four years in a row and he might have just gotten a little bit tired. And you know, the fact that we may need to give our males a rest is also supported by my Hog Island litter. And this litter was um, also from a male who had been bred four years in a row. This was his fourth year. And it was successful, although I only had four babies and I had six slugs. So it might be that the male was just a little bit tired after all these, all this breeding. You know, so the moral is we might want to think about giving our males a year off now and then. And if you're acquiring boas for a breeding group, make sure you get plenty of males. I mean, people just focus on getting females. They think they're going to you know, put one male with like 10 females and pump out the babies, but unfortunately it doesn't work that way. And you really need almost as many males as you have females. Some of the pairings that weren't successful this year will probably be repaired up again for 2021. Sometimes you just have to give it more than one shot. This is the father of the really nice litter of crawl key boas I got this year. And I actually tried to pair him up the previous year in 2019 with the same female and I wasn't successful. Although this year he got the job done. He actually, I just got him back 
um, I believe in late 2018. So he didn't have that much time to adjust to you know the, his new home at my facility, and uh, you know he didn't show any interest in 2019 in mating, but in 2020 it was a different story, and he produced this really nice litter of 13 babies. So you know sometimes you just have to give it more than one shot, and don't give up if you're not successful after your first try. So this was a really nice litter. Some of these babies are already in their new homes. You know, some of you guys out there might have some of them. The others are going to be on their way to their new homes in the near future. You know, I actually ended up holding back three of them from, you know, future breeding. So in addition to the hog and the crawl key, I had two really nice litters of true red tails, one from Suriname, one from Peru. I showed you the male father of the Suriname litter. So this was nine babies, pretty good uh, for a first time female. And then my Peruvian litter was six babies. This is also a first time litter. The same female, actually, I tried breeding her two years earlier with a different male and just got some slugs. So you really have to not, you know, let an initial failure throw you off. Sometimes you just have to keep trying and, you know, one of these days you'll be successful. So both of the litters were kind of on the small side, not too small considering they're a first time mother. You know, I always would like more babies. I mean, who wouldn't? But, you know, sometimes you get quality more than quantity. And these true red tail litters are really, really high quality. Uh, I'm going to come out with a video in, you know, the near future showing you some of the babies from my true red tail litters uh, as soon as they're shedding and established. The Surinams are actually all feeding now except for one. The Peruvians haven't shed yet. But stay tuned for updates on those animals. Now I'm going to say a little bit about my planned pairings for 2021. I've been thinking an awful lot about this lately, just thinking about what animals are ready to go and which ones are most likely to produce some really nice litters. I have planned probably about a dozen or so pairings, so this is going to be by far my most ambitious year, and I'll have my work cut out for me handling all these pairings and taking care of these snakes and continuing to make these videos as well as my other non-snake related responsibilities. So it's going to be really busy but very exciting. With the True Red Tail Boa Constrictor Constrictor, I have about five different types or localities of True Red Tails planned. So this is by far a record for me. So um, one of them is my Guiana True Red Tails. This is the male and this is an Eckert bloodline. And I really like this guy just because of his dark colors and kind of dirty pattern and just a really breathtaking looking animal. This guy and the female actually produced two small litters in the past, the last one back in uh, 2019. So hopefully we'll get another litter from these Guiana red tails. And in addition, I have Suriname, Pacalpa, Peru. Uh, I'm going to repair my Tomatama Venezuela red tails, as well as I have some North Brazilians that are ready to go. And that'll be a really exciting uh, pairing if it takes the North Brazilian uh, true red tail boas. One true red tail locality that I wasn't successful producing in 2020 are the Tomatama Venezuela true red tails. And I'm going to repair them again in 2021. This is the female. And I'm really excited to hopefully produce these animals because this is a super rare locality boa. Um, this is a bloodline that was established by Terry Cullen from animals collected from southern Venezuela at the confluence of the Rio, or the Rio Orinoco and Rio Casacuare in the small village of Tabatama. And they're really unique animals. They have kind of a golden yellowish coloration, not that unlike a Peruvian red tail. But you can see the head shape is completely different. They have a much shorter, blunter head. And they're just a really cool uh, locality boa that shows kind of intermediate. You know, that the shape of the head almost looks more like a Colombian boa. It's kind of got this short, stocky head. Uh, but Venezuelan boas in general are really cool. And I'm lucky to have quite a few of them in my collection. And if I could produce these Tomatama Venezuela red tails in 2021, it would really make me really happy. Another locality that I did produce in 2020 that I hope to produce in 2021 are the Pearl Island boas, boa constrictors of Bogay. So I actually bred these for the first time in 2019. 
So this male produced a litter of five babies with my older female. And then for this year, I paired him up with my younger female and I didn't get any uh, babies produced. But in 2021, he's going to go back with the original female who's been proven. So she's a little bit larger now. So hopefully she should have a slightly larger litter than she did in 2019. But with the Pearl Island boas, usually you get small litters of large babies. So it's pretty typical to have litters in the range of about five to about 12 babies or so. I mentioned the five localities of true red tail boas I'm potentially gonna pair up in 2021. Before I forget, I just wanted to mention the other seven locality boas. So I showed you the Pearl Island boa, um, but also possible pairings include the long tail boa, boa constrictor longicata, uh, the Tarahumara mountain dwarf boa, the hog island boa, the Honduran fire belly boa, the Coops Pastel Colombian Boa, and then last and certainly not least, the Paraguanera Peninsula Boa from Venezuela. So this is my male Paraguanera Boa. He's now about six years old. You can see how small he is. And these are really cool locality Boa. I've showed these quite a bit in my previous videos, but they have a lot of really interesting attributes. Uh, evolutionarily, they look almost like a link between Boa Imperator from Colombia and the true red tail boas from farther south in South America. Really cool pattern and color. You can see the, how contrasty the uh, color and pattern are. Um, they have a lot of cool attributes like the red tails, like this really muscular body. But then you can see the shape of the head is more like a common boa, Boa Imperator. You can see how tightly he's, all, he's holding on as well. This is kind of a one of the more squeezy boas, but they only get to be about four feet long. So they're also a dwarf boa uh, if you're looking for a small animal to keep if you don't have that much space. And these are rarely produced, so I'm really keeping my fingers crossed that I'll be able to produce some of these in 2021. Um, it would really be exciting to have a uh, first time litter of these Peregrinera Peninsula boas. At this point, I'm still not completely sure which of these animals I'm going to be pairing up. But again, I imagine I'll have about a dozen or so pairings from about a dozen or so different localities. So it'll be a really exciting year with a lot of diverse locality projects. And of course, I can't guarantee that they'll all be successful, but fingers crossed that we'll be producing some really beautiful locality boas here at Brian Boas in the year 2021. I'm planning on making videos in the future showing you the pairings as I put them together and also giving regular updates on how the breedings are going and if the females are gravid and then when hopefully I'll have some babies come the summer of 2021. So please continue to stay tuned if you want to follow how my breedings are going. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to shoot me a line. Thanks for tuning in and enjoy your boas.